Hey, this is Guy from New Plastic. Today we're going to be making these textures. I've been getting requests on how to do them. I thought it would be really cool to share. They're procedural, they're fun, they're cool. Yeah, follow me on Instagram at ojang or comment on this video to ask me anything, request anything if you got any questions, all that. So yeah, let's go. So square ratio, octane render. This is our scene. Let's set the opacity of the edges to 990 and start setting up the scene quickly. Let's do path tracing. Set up a quick octane sky. Let's use this quick thing right here. And I'm just gonna set some spheres so we can at least kind of test it out, see, see quickly how we can uh, make these textures. Let's just uh, play around with our with our HDRI and that looks that looks good enough. Play around with the highlight compression already. Set the exposure up and let's not worry about that right now. Let's uh, jump right into the texture. So just a really, really, really quick uh, floor texture. Just so we have something to work with. Let's hide these spheres for now. We don't need them really. Now let's uh, move all the metallic down and we're gonna be using a lot of noise nodes. So let's start with our first one. Um, we're gonna set the projection to box, set the turbulence and we need high contrast, low detail um, noises for this. Let's actually change it to XYZ to UVW for projection. And this is going to be our first base layer. So we don't want a lot of distortion and noise and details in the noise. We want a clean, nice, smooth noise, but high texture, high contrast. That's the most important thing. Black and white. We don't want gray values. Now we're going to, it's important to set uh, a color palette, especially when you deal with a bunch of colors in your scene. So we're just going to just select a few colors and create a palette that we can always go back to throughout our scene as we make more and more textures. We're going to be using the same palette. So once we do that, we're going to select some colors for our gradient. And as you can see, we plug the noise into the gradient node. And now the noise becomes two colors. And we're going to mix that with another noise. And let's add our other noise node. And we're going to use the second noise node as a mask. That's going to reveal the first noise node and another color that we choose. So again, we want very high contrast, contrast. And we'll add an RGB spectrum node, select another color. And as you can see, we have a nice kind of combination of noises and colors. And we want some difference between them. We want the first one, the bass noise to be smaller and the, the top noise to be bigger. We want some contrast so they don't kind of mix in too indistinguishably. That looks okay. We're just gonna play and playing with the gamma allows you to expose or remove one of the colors. So you're gonna be playing a lot with the gamma and the scale. And you can probably already get the main idea of this texture, this combination of noises, but we're gonna make it a bit more interesting by bringing some kind of an imperfection map, in this case, a scratch map. I'm gonna use bridge for that. You can use whatever you want. I imported the texture. I copied the image I need from that imported texture into our own texture. And I'm just gonna plug that into the bump. And if we solo that, we can see the noise texture. Now let's, let's play around with the contrast. Let's play, play around with the gamma, with the scale. So it fits the scene the way we want it and let's invert it so we got those dark we want the scratches to be black so that it bumps the scratches down 
And we're going to use this. We're actually going to use the non-inverted one because the color correction is now inverted. So we're going to use the non-inverted one for the roughness so that whatever is scratched down is less um, rough, is more rough. Let's add um, a model that has edges to it because now we're going to we're going to apply the, the um, worn out edges and we need some edges for that. So let's test it out on this cube. We're going to add the dirt node, increase the strength, and we're going to invert normal so that we can actually see the edges. We're going to add a noise node to the dirt map to break it, break it up a little bit. And we need a lot of details on that noise and some contrast and the blacker it is the less the dirt shows and now we can play around until we have the look that we want that looks pretty good and we're going to mix that with our noise mixture we're going to use that as the amount and we're going to plug in a color node some kind of a creamy color node that's going to be our worn edges and there you go look how cool it is now i'm going to add that dirt node and with a multiply node combine it with a bump bump and now we have the worn edges kind of bump down a little bit because they're black And that should be should be okay for now. Let's play with, with the contrast of the of the, our scratches. I'm gonna play with the scale. Let's um, play around with it until we get the look that we that we want. Now you can really see the scratches. Maybe a bit too much, but let's uh, plug an octane gradient and reduce the contrast of the whole bump node system. Yeah, that's more like it. Now you can see we have some subtle scratches. Cool. Now I'm going to import some shapes that I made in Illustrator. They're just some kind of half shapes that I can then spin around to create a vase like model using the lathe object in Cinema. To do that, I need to save as Illustrator 8. And then in Cinema, in the object layer window, I can click File, Merge Objects, and import that Illustrator file. And we want the center point to be at the centered bottom point of our, of our spline. So we're going to use snap to vertex and move it to the centered bottom vertex of each spline. And now if we select them all, alt click lathe, now they're all lathed up. And as you can see, we have all these cool shapes and all of their center point is at their bottom so what we can do is just set the group to zero y and each one of them to zero y and it's going to be flat on the ground and this one kind of came out a bit overlapping so we're just going to drag the the path to the left a little bit that looks good Nice. Let's scale them up to the right scale. And let's start texturing and seeing how it looks. Let's up the subdivisions on all of them. Because if we see, if we increase the subdivision surface, it's just going to round it out, in a, not in a nice way. So let's increase the subdivision on the lathe. And we're going to do it for all of them. Now what I want to do is I want to create these raised stages in the floor. There's different ways to do that. The healthiest way is to just select the polygons and extrude them up. And now we got a really healthy model that then we can um, then we can uh, apply a bevel deformer on and it'll just uh, very easily bevel all the edges. Let's just kind of set all of our models 
probably not going to use all of them eventually. Let's add a rounded edges to the texture. And now we're going to play around with the textures and add some varieties to them. So now, as you can see, I can just add other noises and get different looks with just a few clicks. So I'm adding a C4D noise. And remember, always incre increase the contrast all the way up. And the C4D noise has more varieties, so I can really play around with the look of the noise. And I'm just selecting different colors to the gradients and playing around with the noises. And as you can see, you can really get all these different looks with just a few clicks. It's, it's really nice. It's really comfortable. again a different kind of noise and by playing with the low clip and high clip or with the gamma if it's an octane noise we can um we can expose the noise more or less and now i'm adding even another noise node and mixing it with all of our noises and you know you can keep doing that forever and as you can see i'm combining a few nodes of the noise multiplying them and then using that as um as a mask to all of our noise uh, system and look at this cool look so by combining all these noises together and colors together you can really get cool looks and you can really experiment with it and surprise yourself now let's just set our scene up Now I want to try something. I want to take one of the noises and attach it to the transmission. And now whatever is white is going to make that texture glassy in the white areas. But I also need the albedo to be black. Of course, turn on fake shadows. I need the albedo to be black. So because then the transmission will show more. The transmission shows when the albedo is black. But right now the albedo is full of colors. So I'm going to use the same noise that I dragged into the transmission and I'm going to combine it with all of our colors. I'm going to invert it so the white is now black and I'm going to apply, uh, combine it with a multiply node with all of our textures. And now you can see that, th that there is a black color wherever that noise was. And now it's a real clear glass texture. So you see, you can really have fun with it. You can just create these weird abstract compositions on surfaces pretty easily and once you once you have it set up it's pretty easy to just change them up and mix them up and have fun with them i set the noise texture to uv so that it fits each scale of each model And I'm going to try a different thing. I'm going to use this noise as to turn on metallic. So again, what's white is metallic and what's black is not metallic. So I can add variations to the metallicness. But again, I need the albedo to be white wherever there is metallic. Otherwise, it'll have this colored metallic look. But if you want it to be like the chromish metallic, you need it to be white. So again, I'm taking the same noise and I'm now using an add node to combine it with the colors because we want the white to show. And just playing around with it, getting the look that you want, playing around with the contrast, with the exposure, the low clip, high clip, or gamma of the noises, the color of the noises, the scale of the noises, and all of that. And I don't like that the dirt node is showing all these polygons. I don't know if you can see, but it's showing this faceted look. So what I did, I went to the dirt node and I upped the tolerance. And it, it removed the dirt node from the um, polygons and removed that faceted look. And that's pretty much it. All right, so let's just kind of quickly add some more interesting lighting. So I brought down the intensity of our octane sky and I added a huge area light from the right, turned it down. 
And then I added, uh, instead of adding another light, I just want to diffuse the shadows on the left side. So I added a huge plane to act as a reflector. So as you can see, the reflector really um, just to diffuses the shadows a little bit. Adding some depth of field. And that's it. Now I'm just making my final adjustments to the composition, the textures and the colors. I'm just fast forwarding through this because it doesn't really matter for this tutorial. So now we're going to render it. I'm setting up, uh, up open the XR. I'm um, setting up the EXR Octane for our passes, tone map, because we introduced highlight compression. I'm going to turn on shadow, denoise beauty, denoise reflection and direct. Turn up max samples on the info, shading normals, and ambient occlusion. And increase the distance of our ambient occlusion. Check the alpha, because uh, we want it to show through the glass. Also the effect alpha on the glass channel, the glass texture. Now in the normals tab, you can see that some of the models are red. That's because their normals are flipped. Sometimes it happens with the lathe object. If it happens, go to the lathe object and check flip normals. And I increased, uh, I de decreased the size of the, of our scratches even more. And uh, that's it. And after playing around with some stuff, this is what I ended up with. I really hope you learned something from it and you can apply these techniques somehow in whatever you do. I came up with this technique just because I wanted um, a cool abstract texture. And I really think it shows the beauty and the creativity in a note based texture system. It's all about playing around and messing around and combining things together. So yeah, if you got any questions, any suggestions or anything, hit me up on Instagram at Ojang, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And that's it. Have a great day. Peace.